Hello True Believers, it's time for another Police Gone Wild video. And I was going to do the Chris and Cebu update part two this morning, but I saw this on my suggested videos. Actually, I saw this yesterday. I just didn't have time. I said, oh, you know what? I'll do a video of it. So it just happened. So this happened uh, this week. I'm not sure exactly, maybe uh, two days ago. And it's been going viral. And it what it's what this is a police. Uh, I think they said master sergeant, but we'll we'll see in the video what it is. And it's also in Quezon City. And a lot of the news coverage. And you're probably wondering why why is it there's so much news coverage about Quezon City police? Well, most of the news stations, most of the, actually the TV stations are in Quezon City, so you what what happens is you you basically just work where you live and it's just so easy to just make uh, once this happens they just get out of the building of their of their building in Quezon City and then <coughs> there's the news right there so it's very convenient so a lot of it has to be out of convenience i'm sure this happens in a lot of different places but it doesn't get coverage but if the news station is right there right in your backyard and it's happening in your backyard, then it's easy to give it coverage. But anyway, I like I said, I will probably do the Chris and Cebu update. I've got some, prob uh, we have some good comments that I could probably uh, analyze and add to. So we'll, we'll get to that after I do this. So thanks again, Jim Bob, for your generous contribution. We're gonna apply it to Heroes Football Funds. Uh, the bad news this week is there's another quarantine issued, so no no gym. So, but I have some footage of uh, you. I like one more footage of the last time or one of the last times we used the gym. So I'll, I'll upload that. But we could still use the football field to do practice, and we still do our running. So back to this video. <coughs> so this happened just like a few days ago, and there's this police. And like I said, he, I think he's a master sergeant. But anyway, we'll go into what happened in this video. And the title of this video, as you can see, is uh, Lola Patay Matapos Barilin ng Lasing na Police. So this is Lola means grandma, killed, Patay means killed, after she was shot, Barilin. Matapos is shot, Barilin is... Uh, uh, Matapos is after Barilin is shot ng Lasing na police after a drunk Lasing is drunk police is obviously police they just use the Tagalog phonetic spelling and I'm not sure what NXT stands for I'm sure somebody in the comments will tell me so here's the video so it's pretty graphic so you've been warned and let's take a look at it and we'll do a commentary on it So there's there's some subtitles and th this is apparently the police over here and he says dito pa and he says come here he's saying and the lady says sir wag nyo naman ako subunutan sir it means sir wag means no don't uh, ako means me subunutan means don't pull my hair sir so so don't be yanking on my hair sir that's what she's saying so don't don't abuse me so as you can see he's he's got his arm his hand on her head, pulling on her hair, and go to the rest of the video. And then you hear a shot after that. So here, here it is in graphic detail. This is her last moments. This is this grandma's last moments right here, where the guy has his uh, hand on her hair, and she he shot her in the neck. So let's go to the rest of the video. So dead, a one fifteen year old grandma after, and then he just kind of walks away like he just ate a sandwich. So here she is, the down on the ground, like like it's nothing. So she was. She's dead after she was shot by the police in Fairview, Quezon City. 
on NXT Daily. So that's probably the name of the. So now I, I know what NXT is. It's the uh, next. It's probably the, and uh, that's the name of the news program, I guess. So in the video, sa video makilala na bumili ng sigarilyo ang biktima na si Lilibeth Valdez. So in the video, you can see that she's buying cigarettes here. Uh, the victim is named Lilibeth Valdez. And then she sees the suspect. I mean, it's at this point, it's, it's not the suspect. It's pretty much the killer. Uh, this is one of those res ipsy locator where the, the thing speaks for itself. The video speaks for itself. You don't really have to say that the, that the suspect is... So, ilang saglit. So, just a moment. Now, saglit just became very popular. When I was a kid, saglit wasn't the word. It was sandale. But I think over the years, saglit replaced sandale, which means in a moment. So just a just a few minutes or just a few moments, the sumunod the uh, sa, some the suspect followed her. So sumunod sa kanya. The 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 problem is the grammar is reversed. It's like followed her the suspect. So here we go. His name is oh, okay. Here it is, Master Sergeant Henzi Zinampan. So after she bought her cigarettes, she was followed by Master Sergeant Henzi Zanampa. And from the video, you could probably watch, look at the video yourself. He has like this, this bag and he pulls out a gun. And make sure the clip is on it. So you can see in the video, it says here, in, uh, the police has brought a gun with him so the lumapitan suspects a victim at nakaroon muna so the suspect approached the victim and they're gonna have a conversation so they were so they were having a conversation or a discussion before she was shot so here's a play by play so here's their conversation it says sinong wala ha sinong wala it's like who has nothing ha huh? who has nothing or who is nobody <laughs> i think that's a pretty uh, a better translation is who is nobody so uh, apparently i don't want to add any more detail to it there's is that their neighbors and of course like with all neighbors the rule pretty much here is you get along with you get along most with the neighbor that is farthest from you and you don't get along with the neighbor closest to you but as you can see these people live side by side in this kind of squatter squalor area i mean mo most of like you're talking about 99 percent of the people live like this versus the one percent that don't Yeah, who's who's nothing? It's like who's who's nobody. He's probably they probably had a discussion or argument where the where they said, "Oh, you're nothing. You're nobody." And then now he's saying now that he's drunk, now that he's gun. Okay, say that again to my face. Now that I have a gun, is probably is most likely what he's trying to say. But let's continue. And he said, "Now we're both drunk." Right? <laughs> so it says ngayon means now, parehas means together or the same, tayo means we, laseng means drunk, diba means correct, or is that right, or, you know, all right, or like emphasis. Uh, you, you know what I mean? It's kind of like saying, you know what I mean? So diba is always, people kind of overuse it to just, it's like saying and stuff, or you know what I mean, and like, and you and let's continue. And then I think the person, there's a person there that there's always people around and says, yeah, they said, just, just um, uh, back away from it or just uh, move away from it or just calm down. Iwasan Moyan means uh, it's, it's like reduce it or calm down. And, and then what? What calm down? 
ngayon makikita mo ha today you'll see right now you'll now you'll see is a now you'll see so he cocks the gun loads one in the chamber so that was their conversation so he says here now come here now it's time. Here it is. It's coming. And then she says, she says, sir, don't pull my hair, sir. Come in. Come in. Then pop. Done. So afterwards, he just walks away, you know, on video like it was nothing. So here we go. He just kind of walks out like that. Okay, I'm done. Next, that's it. No remorse, no regret, no guilt. Just as if it's just a matter of fact. Let's go ahead and finish the rest of the video and then I'll do my commentary. So this is the daughter of the the grandma that died. So, so the daughter, so she's a grandma. So at 52, that's normal. So people in this... People in these areas, poor people in these areas, uh, have uh, kids early in their teens. So, fifty-year-old, fifty-two-year-old grandma uh, is normal. I mean, you could probably have a great grandma that is probably fifty-two years old. And either way, I think the name for great grandma and grandma is the same. So here is Beverly Lucenia. I, I, I don't know who took the video, but she's saying. So she's saying over here, it's like at the same time she pulled her hair and then she uh, pulled off her head to the side to expose her neck. And there's where she was shot. That's where she was shot. So she was just shot in the jaw. So they were just, so the, I'm sure these are the witnesses. So it's saying here that the police was not on duty. And he's a, a member of the, so he's a member of the PSPG, Police Security and Protection Group. So, so right away they reported the incident to the police. So he was arrested right away. So here he is in the back of the police van. So they're saying that he had a, a disagreement or a fight with the police or with with him. Ang asawa at anak ng biktima noong may oh so he had a, he said he had a fight with the husband and the child or the son or daughter of the the grandma that he killed so in May one so a month ago so it's june one june two now so he's saying that he is so he's saying say tinangye means he denied that he was the one who shot the grandma is his statement here So here it is, even though it's obvious in the video that he's denying it. So the reporters are asking, why did you do that to the grandma? It says here, bakit means why, no, you. Bo means like out of like respect or formality. It's like saying tu or usted. Tu means like in Spanish, with somebody you know, you're familiar with. Usted is more formal. So it's kind of like po. Ginawa yun dun sa babae. So why'd you do that to the Lord? Ginawa means, why did you do? Or did you, you did? He says, his statement is, I didn't do anything, sir. Wala akong ginawa. Wala means nothing. Ako means me. Ginawa means do. Me do nothing. 
He goes, what? He goes, what? What did you say? What? Did you say something? And he's saying, no, I didn't do that. <laughs> so even after he was caught, it was like plain as day that he did it. He just said, nope, that, that wasn't me. Sorry. I, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. So to the the recover the not, re, not recover <laughs> that's it it's recovered on the suspect the gun but it means gun ginamit the one he used nya means his on the victim victima so back in December 2020 so that was just uh this this last Christmas so known this so he posted on his Facebook social media, this statement. So this is him right here. So he says, Buong puso on dedication sa trabaho. I'm proud, proud to be a good cop. My whole heart is dedicated to my work, is that's what he said. So that's what he posted on his Facebook back in December 29, 2020. So his whole heart is dedicated to his work and he's proud to be a good cop. Now he's in the custody. So hawak now. So that's what it means. He's in the custody of the Quezon City Police. So he's been uh, charged with murder. I mean, that's it's it's basically he's dead to rights. He. He was on video, he killed the grandma, <laughs> they got the gun on him that they use. So they he's this one is uh like I said, it's slam dunk. This case is this case is over before it started. So the PNP chief police he's, he loves being in the media. You see him every day on the news. So let's continue. So the chief ordered that he be uh, fired from his position. So before we go, I go to my analysis, let's get to the some of the comments over here and see if, there, if there's some interest. Let's look at the sort by the top comments. Let's see. Top comments. Uh, yeah, that doesn't make sense. This one it says parang manok lang. It just seems like it's just like she's killing a chicken. And this one says uh, super lone runner says nagago ng baril si Lola maging magiting at magiling ng police. So he says that. Oh, because the lo the police is going to say that because the Lola went for his gun, that's what he was going to say. I mean, that's probably what, uh, if it wasn't on video, that he was going to say that, oh, the grandma went for his gun. But obviously, you could see that's not the case. Sino kaya yung nagsalita ng gawin, gawin, do it, do it? There was somebody in the background saying, do it, do it. Uh, and, this, and this guy says, uh, the police shouldn't be allowed to drink. Uh, so this one says that uh, you know, his, he should be in jail for life. Uh, the the police again. This one saying. So it's an amount cold blood in the top. Para wala sa kanya siyang pagpatay. So here's another cold blooded killer for him. Killing is nothing. Uh, kawawa means a oh, poor poor thing. And this one says, "Addict na police, wala sa katinoan, death penalty, asan ka na tagal during the time." So a lot of the comments will be, "Look at this. This this is the the state of the police. You doubled their salary, and they just got worse." And I, <clears throat> so that's a, that's a good point. Let's talk about my analysis over here in this situation. I. Uh, <coughs> This is this is another cold-blooded killer, cold-blooded murderer. I know it says in there that that uh, he says that we're both drunk, and he that he's saying he's drunk. And look, 
I've been drunk several times, okay? And as you can see, this person, even if he's drunk, even if he's drinking, if he's buzzed, even if he's tipsy, I've been in all those situations where I've, I've passed out from drinking too much. And it's <laughs> it's never an excuse. You always have... Uh, it, the only thing that drinking does is it it... What is it? Emphasizes the truth or it amplifies what you really want to do, what you're really thinking. I, I mean, for some, for example, for, for some girls, you know, they become more, what's the word I'm looking for? I become more, uh, what's the word? Like more relaxed, more, there's a, there's a proper word that I'm, I'm trying to think of here more open <coughs> to to certain things and there that's why there part of me kind of disagrees or dis, dis agrees or disagree uh, there's a law that says if a girl is drunk she's not in a state of mind where she can consent and uh, but people do all the time people have drunk sex all the time i I've, I've done it I've done it several times and it's it's not an excuse to kill somebody okay now it, i mean uh, you might not have normally had sex with somebody that you wouldn't but uh but since you're drunk you you're saying sure why not because i was drunk and it's pretty much just an excuse so pretty much the next day the next morning you could say hey you know we were drunk so we have a, like an excuse even though we really wanted to do it but we just never good enough it's like also it's like tr uh, alcohol is like truth serum or it's uh, it's courage in a bottle so oh inhibitions that's a word i'm looking for it decreases your inhibitions that's what it does so you could normally do things that you wouldn't do because you're normally inhibited but since you're not uh, your inhibitions you still want to do it so but anyway i it's it's you 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 can't you can't all of a sudden that you know say this person has no fault because it was the alcohol that did it it's like he did it the alcohol just helped him do it so you can't really blame the alcohol it's like alcohol doesn't kill people people still kill kill people just like with guns and the problem with guns is alcohol doesn't you can't use an alcohol you can't use alcohol and uh it'll put a, a bullet through your your head and cause brain trauma but that's what a gun can do now if a, a person is drunk and they don't have a gun then they then most likely the, it'll just be uh, uh, you somebody will just get beat up or something like that but when they have when when it when you have a situation like this where they have guns or knives, which is more popular, so there's nothing more common here on the weekends. People get drunk and they stab their their drinking friend, their drinking buddy. That they it's it's just, it's just the funniest thing here in the Philippines. And this is the the dark side of Filipino culture. People over here just kind of live in the moment which is a good thing there's a lot of positives about it but this is the negative about it and this thing happens on a daily basis where somebody they have to yabang which means to save face or they have to uh, put themselves over you and have uh, status over you like i said when i was in prison that's a that's even in prison status is important status in the prison i i told you in my in my own personal experience, I, the uh, the prisoners run the jails, no matter how big, no matter how small. Once you're inside, there's somebody in charge in there and somebody that runs it. And uh, obviously, my, from my own personal experience that I was able to, to after two months, I, I really had no choice. It was something that fell in my lap that I was in charge of the jail in there, the daily operations, how we support ourselves, how we make money, how we support the other prisoners. Obviously, you know, we don't do drugs, we don't sell drugs, we don't make drugs in prison. What, we, what I did was pretty much the gray area, the legal route, which is sell cigarettes. Okay, cigarettes are not allowed in there, but so we have operating expenses, uh, cigarettes are allowed to sell. It's not illegal. We have to make money. We don't have a choice. It's pretty much open. Everybody knows it. 
the point is that status so it, after two months uh, so for the next five or six months I was the one in charge of the prisons there and I almost became one also in the in the medium term prison but I was under and one of the gangs, the gangs uh, ha had me like it was on one of their honorary gang members. And the reason why I couldn't rank up or I couldn't be a gang member or I couldn't be a gang leader because I didn't want to get a tattoo. <laughs> they said, you can be part of us. We'll make you a gang leader. You, you could have status as much as you want. You just have to get your you just have to get a tattoo. And that's just something I refuse to do. I said, I'm not going to get a tattoo so I can get status here in prison. Uh, when I was in detention, I didn't need it uh, because I was uh, the I, I was the one appointed by the guard on duty that I was going to be the one I was going to be the new coordinator. I was going to be the new mayor, and that's how prisons are run over here. They have these gang leaders, so I became the leader of the prison over there, and they were offering that to me whether I wanted to be a gang leader or not. And I and I said I respectfully declined uh, because gangs have been running uh, prisons for so long. And if you wanted to get any leadership, and then the, of course the the police work with the gangs uh, because it's a business, and uh, the business uh, is run efficiently by the gangs, and the gangs are the one in charge when it comes to prison. And I'll probably go in more detail about that in another time. It's just not a popular subject, revisiting the experience, but I know it's something that I have to do. So I status is important over there. Uh, but to me, it's not. But to everybody else, my status here in prison, and I said, even in prison, they have a jewelry shop. They have a, like a jewelry store. They have like a jewel, you know, that pays rent in the visiting area. So it's like a regular Zales where you can, it's, it's like you're at a mall where you, if you you have visitors and you tell them, you tell your visitors, oh, I want uh, this, this jewelry over here, this necklace or this bracelet or this ring or this pinky ring or this toe ring. And you can buy it there. And the police allow it because the place makes money and the place and the stall pays rent in that stall so you could tell your your family members or your friends can you buy this for me and the best best part about it is they have layaway so if you don't uh, if you can't pay for it now you can they'll put it on reservation you just put a deposit on it and then make payments on it every time they visit and then after that after so many months or so many years you've got your status okay and People always uh, when I, I remember when I, I'd be waiting for my uh, for my hearing and they all have to be handcuffed and while I'm out people will be trying to sell me their their jewelry because they need money and it's always silver and they always say uh, do you want to buy silver do you like silver and I show them my handcuffs and I said this is all the silver that I need here in prison I don't need your status but here in the Philippines this is the culture this is the norm. Now I have to explain this to you and I know most of the, there's going to be 99.9% .9 of the people that are the information is great but they're not going to apply it so but there's going to be one or two of you out there that are going to take this information and be able to apply it to make sure that this doesn't happen to you or you could use this information to make to keep yourself safe or your loved ones safe or your friends safe and that you'll have a that you won't die like this person here in the Philippines, just like I didn't die. I mean, if I was if I was supposed to be dead, if I was supposed to be shot, uh, I would have been shot in prison a long time ago. That would have been easier versus out here. Now that I have, uh, now that I'm out and I have a lot of personal private security around here, which is uh, here, which is I'll get to. I have this document over here that I I need to get to. Watch I. Which is why I had to interrupt my Kristen Cebu, which which I'm gonna I'm gonna get to in a minute. I have a lot of stuff that I need to talk about, but this one kind of came up. So, like I've said, the people over here, the culture over here, as you can see, they just live for the moment. They don't think about the consequences of their actions. Okay, that's both good and bad at the same time, because uh, th these people. It could be really kind, could be really, could be, could have a good time. Their Filipinos are the best people to have a great time with. They're 
because they just enjoy the moment. If you're eating, you can see the look in their eyes. If they're shopping, this is like the greatest moment ever because there's nothing more exciting for them than living in that moment alone. So in to, to describe the moment, you will, no matter how many times you shop, no matter in how many times you eat, you will never be as happy. That's what uh, sometimes I envy or I'm jealous uh, when I when I take the when our friends shopping or going eating because I'm never going to be as happy as they are at that moment. And all I could do is share the experience or I uh, enjoy the experience with them. But I can't truly enjoy that because I, uh, for me, I've, I've my where I get my enjoyment, where I get my happiness from, my thrill you can't buy. But for them, you can buy through their food. For me, my thrill is the time I'm spending. My time, their time spending with me is more important than money. I know it's hard to believe. I'm at the point where, uh, at my at my age, where uh, to me, time, the quality time that I spend with them is more important than the money itself. And I know a lot of people will agree with that. The time, quality time is more important than money. But there's a flip side to this. Is is this is the flip side? Is and then when when it comes to situations where a person wants to show their status, when they're in the disagreement, when they're they're angry and they've got a gun, and they're just gonna go on impulse and they're just gonna do what their emotion. So they the the people over here are controlled by emotions, not by their higher level of thinking, not the higher their level of consciousness, because these these people are neighbors and this guy knows that this person is a has. Yeah, yeah, this person has kids, they have a family, this person's a loved one, and they're just going to wipe them out of existence. And for what? You know, what is the reason? Because of status. Because you hurt my status, and this is how... You hurt, it, I guess, in, in Japanese culture, it's like, a, this is my honor. You have you have discredited me, you, you, have, um, you have discredited my honor. What's the, what's the saying here? You have insulted my honor, and now this is how I'm gonna get back my honor through killing you. So, on emotion, and they're not thinking about the consequences of their actions or what's gonna happen after. And you can't use the excuse that because he was drunk. Because like I said, uh, I, I've been drunk before and I would never go out. Even if I had a gun, I wouldn't go out and kill somebody. And people have seen, I. Even if I was drunk and people have seen me get, I've been mad before on video if you watch that restaurant video where I went off on a group of girls because we were eating and uh, we spent uh, we had this nice meal at a nice restaurant with a bunch of uh, all our friends. I, I don't know. Maybe there's maybe six or seven of them. Then after they ate we were planning on having dessert and I said hey let's have dessert. I know this place. Just, we could just go over we because it's a bunch of restaurants and we can continue spending time then all of a sudden by domino effect all of a sudden all the girls this was like a maybe a friday night or a saturday night all the girls started saying oh my my mom is calling me uh, they all look at their phones and they say oh my mom is calling me right now i gotta get home right away right and this <laughs> there's nothing further from the truth it wasn't their mom it was like their friends or their boyfriends looking for them and they want to now that they ate now they're going to go eat and run and for me this was uh this was embarrassing for me this is where i was losing face like look i've been with you girls for a long time i've taken you eating then finally just for one night i uh, we go eating again i'm taking you girls shopping just for one night finally one of our visitors come here it was it was a video with wes and you could at least I wasn't asking for much. At least let's have dessert together and have more time together. You know, it was still early. I think uh, it was still probably like eight or uh, nine, uh, eight o'clock. And I just said, hey, let's just stay until nine. I think we ate at uh, six, spent an hour eating seven. And then I was going to let them go after that, but at least complete the night by having dessert. So another hour or two wasn't going to kill them. Then they're going to spend the rest of the night with their boyfriends. But they didn't want to think that they were already full. Their belly was already full and they wanted to go. And that's where I said, you know, isn't that disrespectful? And I, I went off on them, even in the restaurant. And they were all 
uh, crying at the end. But the, the, but if you watch the video, I mean, there was videos of it. Of course, it's deleted now. YouTube deleted it, and I I have copies of it, of course, but the police have it. But if I ever get it back, one of those one of these days, I'll upload it. And then the next day, I interviewed one. I interviewed the girls. She was really nice about it. So we saw each other again the next day, uh, like two or three of the girls. And I asked her, uh, what, what, what did you think? Uh, I mean, was it okay? You know, I wanted to get a response. You know, I was mad. Were you, were you ever scared? And she says, no, I, I was never scared. You were, I was never scared. <laughs> she says, you were right. You have the right to be angry. We were being disrespectful. That was not nice. To, there was, uh, un, uh, we were, it was in hot. Uh, what about our hospitality? I was saying, what about this Filipino hospitality? Then after you eat, you're going to run right away. Or you don't even want to have dessert. You you want to go right away. And she said that you that I was angry, but I was always in control. They were never in danger or they were in, in never in, in any fear. They were just, their feelings were hurt because they were getting scalded in a restaurant because of it's more of what they, what they did was wrong versus what I was doing of course I was pointing it out but she said that they were never uh in danger or they were never scared that I was going to hurt them I even asked hero I go did you ever see me hit your mom or if we ever get in a fight or yeah lo and behold me and the boss will get into our, our arguments which is not very much we haven't, uh, ever since I've been out of prison, we haven't really gotten into any fights or any arguments. But before, we will, we will get into our tiffs here and there. I Probably because I, I, my, I wasn't probably spending enough time with her is probably it. And then I will go spend my time. But I was, like I said, I've been being pulled in many directions. When people are coming, like on a weekly basis, I was getting to a point where I was spending more time with Bevots only than time with my family because everybody was coming, especially when the holidays were coming, like two or three people were coming. And I, I had no choice. I had to prioritize the people that were not going to be here. I mean, normally is I, I, I would have, I would get a visitor and then I, then I would spend time with my family. But when everybody was coming all at the same time, even overlapping, it, we were, we, we, there was, there was times where I had to say, well, I, I have no choice. I, I have a visitor. The visitor is coming. What am I supposed to do? Uh, not go get them at the airport? Who else is going to get them in there? Well, why don't they just get their own airport taxi? Or anything? And then I'll say, oh, what? About, then I'll go, well, what about this? What about that? I'll just make it up to you. Well, you always say that. You'll make it up to us. But you never because there's another person coming. So that's just an example of what we had before. But I ask Hiro, I, he goes, no, I never see you. <laughs> and, and then the boss, and I ask Hiro, it's like, why do you, because uh, you don't need to, dad, <laughs> is what he'll say. You don't need, you don't need to do that. Your your words hurt enough, or hurt more than than any anything physical that, that you would do. And I, I, I go, okay, I know exactly what you mean. So the point I'm saying here, so enough about me, is what we're talking about here, the culture, the people here in the Philippines, is that the people are just on impulse and this is the dark side of it and uh, that's why it's not it's not good to be with people with guns and uh, I it, it people it, it there he probably has a lot of problems and all probably resorts to a lot of it is because of money they have money everybody here has money issues money problems they have debt that just kind of piles up and compounds and sometimes it comes out and this is how they express it uh, but and it's just a symptom maybe this person was already having a bad day they got all these issues that, that they're that they're dealing with that they can't solve and they need to and then this this is kind of like the maybe the the straw that broke the camel's back i mean there's all kinds of situations that play out over here that are the same for everyone so we could assume that this person is the same thing but just the, just the same as uh, back in December when uh, that police shot that mother and her her son over the fireworks noise. I mean, the guy probably had problems already that he just this was just the straw that broke the camel's back and the same thing in this situation. And the the hardest thing is to them, it's it's like nothing. And I've always said it's like the the humanity part is missing. Well, you can always make the argument it was the same thing is happening in America 
where people are shooting each other over uh, in the freeways in the on the road where they're just shooting at each other and and the people the innocent people in the cars i i saw in the news feed well, the other day a child got shot through his his car seat and the first, last thing he said was my tummy hurts that was like very graphic because you know i have a child and to hear something like that and then have him to bleed to death is just a is just a horrifying experience that's why I, I when I drive, I, I, I'm always careful. I don't escalate, but it's getting to a point where people are in emotion. And if people get cut off all the time in America on the roads and people would normally just give each other the finger and move on. But now it's getting to a point uh, with the world and the same thing over here. It's just getting worse and worse. And... Uh, here in the Philippines, it becomes unique because there's no humanity over here. Uh, people will just come up to you. There's no, at least in the freeway shooting, you're in a car, you can, you're anonymous, you can get away, you have a chance of escape. This person just walks up, shoots a person, and just says and calmly denies it afterwards. And the only reason why he's dead to rights is because it's on video. And another thing you have to tell you about is like the culture of the police over here in the Philippines because he's so used to, he's probably, this is not the first time he killed somebody and got away with it. And it just spills over into other aspects of his life. I'm sure a part of his work, he'll just kill somebody and just say, plant drugs on him, plant the gun on him, case closed, there's no repercussions from it. Well, what happens is that that's going to spill over into other people. I mean, it's fine with drug addicts and drug dealers and other criminals, but when you start doing it to innocent civilians, i.e., for example, like me, because of status or because of jealousy or because of over money, then you've got a situation where things can go bad like this. You could end up dead like this Lola or you could end up dead like the Korean businessman or you could end up dead like that mother and son at the hands of the police over here because they have guns and they have this culture of impunity that they could just deny it. They could just say that the gun, they went for my gun and then case closed. And the only reason why this person is in trouble is because it was caught on video. But imagine how often this thing plays out every day. And imagine if you're here in the Philippines and you're going to be, if you plan on moving here, if you plan on living here, you can live here, you can move here, but you have to keep in mind that things like this are going to happen to you if you live here long enough. Just like it happened to me, uh, the fortunate thing is I lived and I survived and maybe that's my purpose in life is to make sure to warn you, to give you the information. So it's my job to share and give you and share the experiences. I have firsthand personal knowledge of the experience. That's my job to inform you and to warn you. And the second, it's your job now is to apply it to make sure that this doesn't happen to you. Maybe the second part of my job is to help you apply it also so this doesn't happen to you. So now that you know that this is the culture and this is and there's nothing more dangerous than somebody who's just living. People are just living for the now and they're holding a gun. And that's what the police are here in the Philippines. Whether you could say that they're the real criminals here or not, it's kind of like, what's what's the point? Uh, they have the guns, uh, they're legally, uh, it doesn't have to be police that could do this. But the problem is it's the police that they have, uh, number one, they, they can legally carry a gun with them anytime. And number two, they could use they know the law and they could use the law on their side to commit these kind of criminal actions like this cold blooded murder. So he can easily say that it was self-defense. This grandma was going for his gun while they were just having a chit chat. But the fact of the matter, the, well, the sad, uh, not the sad part, the, the reality is that I, uh, that's not the truth. And over here in this video, the truth doesn't lie. And like I said, uh, there's other videos where they're planting uh, <coughs> evidence also, just like they did with the mayor. And if they could do this to this Lola, that means they could do this to you also. And for you, it could be both. For It could be over status. It could be over jealousy. It could be because of your money. And same thing with me. Because of money, because of the love of money, and because of jealousy, I almost ended up dead like this person. 
But anyway, at least you'll know that this is the reality here in the Philippines. That you have to, the most people that, yes, uh, you have to worry about the criminals over here, the petty criminals. But you really have to worry about the criminals over here, the legal criminals over here with guns that can legally carry it. And just because they're jealous or just because they're in need for money, you could end up just like this also. And unless it's caught on camera, uh, it doesn't matter whether they go to jail or not because it's not going to bring you back to life. So uh, the Philippines wasn't like this before, but you can make arguments or I could probably make discussions. The Internet has made the world uh, one place. The Internet has has shared. It's become the Internet culture, which was uh, which is like an American invention. And now because of the Internet, uh, it's made things worse. It's like people uh, want what's on the Internet, what they see on the Internet. They want to copy it. This is kind of like American culture just destroying other cultures and it's created more criminals more because of they they have to copy whatever that is that they have to they see something on the internet and they want to they want to be like it and they want to do it <clears throat> and how are they going to how are you going to do it if you're only if you're making five six hundred dollars a month and then how are you and then status becomes more important it's like they post stuff on social media and now it's like i have to get my honor you you insulted my honor and i have to get my honor back and this is how i'm gonna do it it's just like i said it's become the internet has definitely made the world a smaller place and it's became made it a more dangerous place and if you're going to be coming here to the philippines keep in mind that these the kind of things are happening and there's a preventative things that you could do to and knowing and one of the things is knowing is half the battle one of the first things you, you have to do is accept the truth you don't want to be like these like like brain dead where he'll come in my live stream and says oh everybody here is so nice they'll give you the shirt off your back they'll also give the bullet off their guns also if you uh, if <laughs> over something so minor over and this person is dead for what you know what is the reason why uh, the reason is there's no there's no reason why and when it comes to western minds or western standards there's no reason to justify killing another human being but when there is no humanity there's nothing stopping them from nothing stopping from this police master sergeant from killing his, his neighbor regardless whether he's drunk anyway let me know what you think in the comments how this culture of police like uh this they have the like right to they have this this uh right to kill uh and they just uh, and just walk away with it with uh, with no like i said like i said in the comments how there it's it's just there's look look at it yourself how there's no humanity and how if it, this could have been easily me while I was in prison and if it could happen to me and I didn't do anything wrong, it could happen to you also. Just like if you're an innocent person and just because just because you didn't do anything wrong, just like this person didn't do anything wrong, this could happen to you also. So now that you know, go out there and apply it. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you think. This is Bebbles Only. Thanks for watching.